story time. So one of the reasons why I write poetry is because when I was in uh, third, fourth grade, I used to get beaten up by these two girls. And I always hear people say, oh, but you know, kids can be so mean and you know, everybody got bullied or whatnot. But my story is quite interesting because um, I grew up in a messy school in um, the 80s. And I remember clear as day that every recess I was being beaten up by these two girls, one girl with long red hair with freckles and then the other girl, I, I think she was like Filipina or something like that. And they would beat me up because they would say that I needed to learn English because I was a stupid Mexican and that I needed to learn the language. And I just remember being terrified because as far as I was concerned, all the other Latino kids had the same accent as me. But somehow, for whatever reason, these two girls would always beat me up. And although I had an older sister and other sisters, you know, they were too scared to, to really help me. And there was nobody during recess that could help me. So I would, you know, they would push me against the wall and call me all these mean um, things about being Mexican and about not speaking the language. So of course I would go home terrified, uh, would tell my mom and uh, nothing was really ever done because she was in her own trauma drama and really wasn't paying attention to what was going on with any of us in school because she had her own life to deal with. So I grew up terrified of going to school. So every day um, during, you know, after school, when I would go into my room, I would look in the mirror and I would try to pronounce the words in English so they could sound perfect, just like all the other white kids, because um, not because I was ashamed of who I was, I was terrified that, you know, I was going to keep getting beaten. And I knew that in order for the beating to stop that I needed to have this perfect English. And you can even hear it now. If you hear a lot of my my poetry that I do or the videos that I do, if you listen close enough, there's like this lisp that I have at the end of every word because of all those years that I tried to pronunciate the words correctly. And it really came from this fear of being beaten. Uh, point being that, you know, that went on for a couple years. And then when I finally perfected or thought I had perfected my English, I went on to high school and, uh, you know, I continued to feel incredibly, um, inc incredibly scared about not being able to have this perfect English or scared of being ridiculed. Because when I would go home in, in a Latino family, it was really important for my mother for us to speak perfect Spanish. So when we didn't say a word in Spanish, because we weren't allowed to speak English in the house, uh, when we weren't speaking perfect Spanish, she would uh, ridicule us and, and the rest of my family, meaning uncles, cousins who would come from Mexico, who were appalled that her children growing up in the U.S. didn't know Spanish perfectly. Our, our language needed to be perfect because God forbid that uh, my mother didn't raise children with perfect Spanish. It, it was almost like a mark on her on her idea of what a perfect mother would be. And so I grew up being terrified of <laughs> not speaking perfect Spanish in the home and being ridiculed for it. And then not speaking proper English because I didn't want kids to think that I was stupid. I was a, you know, a stupid Mexican because I didn't speak proper English. And so I would practice in the mirror and just try to perfect the English and then I would try to perfect the Spanish which was a complicated thing for a young kid so when I moved on to high school I didn't want to take any English classes <laughs> because I was terrified of just learning the language or learning any language so I was really introverted really shy and uh, you know never would have imagined that I would be in front of a camera doing videos or anything like that and um, I remember going into instead of going into an English class um, I went into a poetry class and I believe that poetry saved me poetry saved me because I it was a language that I knew how to use and the reason being was because when I first um, took this creative writing class, which was a poetry class with Dr. Um, Mr. Foltz in Aptos High School. He told me that in poetry, there was no rules. 
and that you could say whatever you wanted and express yourself however you wanted and you didn't have to worry about sentence structure or or commas or or um, semicolons or anything like that right and that was a relief to me that i had found a language that i could finally express myself in in both english and spanish in where there was no rules and so i grew up to be an incredibly um, shy um, young girl with a really low self-esteem because of this identity crisis that i that i was experiencing that never really stopped i never really stopped experiencing that until my 30s even now in my 40s because there's a lot of trauma that comes with not really having a language so for me poetry became uh, the language that i could speak it, it became the language that i could express ideas with it became the language in which i communicated um, with my loved ones and I communicated with friends and I was never ashamed to, you know, recite a poem or write a poem because I knew that it didn't matter how it sounded. It didn't matter what, how it was structured. It didn't matter if it was perfect or not. So poetry became my language. So when you ask, why is it important for a person to have a language? Well, it's important because it's part of who you are. And for me, poetry has always been that. It's always been that language that I could never master fully, that I could master fully. Um, and the other languages I could never master, I could never really master English. You can hear you can still hear my lisp, but you can, there's still residue of all of that trauma when I speak English. And in Spanish, there's a lot of trauma when I speak the words in Spanish, because even now in my 40s, I still get ridiculed by family members because they don't know any better uh, about the way that I sound or the things that I say that I'm not supposed to say that way because I sound too American or I sound too Mexican. <laughs> um, and that's the story about why I write poetry and why it's important for all of us to have a language, for all of us to have a form of expression. And for some people, their language is art. For some people, it was photography. For me, it was photography for many, many years because uh, I was very quiet about my poetry for as long as I can remember. But photography was a way that I could look through a lens and quiet my mind and express myself because I was, through photography, I would allow people to see what how I was seeing the world and so I you know I did photography for a long time for a living and then it wasn't until my late 30s where I really got the courage to to start writing poetry in particular like writing poetry in certain relationships that I had and expressing myself that way completely like cheesy love poetry and but it was still my language you know and now in my 40s I'm like wow this is amazing that I, I can completely own it, completely own the fact that I have a language and that language is poetry and I'm not ashamed of it. And it's okay that I have a lisp when I speak in certain certain words in English. And it's so hilarious because I still get corrected. You know, I still get corrected at, at 40 something uh, from all types of people. Oh, that's, you know, that's not how you say that word. Or that's not how you spell that word and you know the funny thing is that I'm in publishing <laughs> so it matters right but but in in my Latino family the same thing you know in my 40s but I've I'm way past that now I see people in a very very different light and I forgive all those who have who have injected in me uh, you know when their own wisdom uh what they believe i should be like you know and since then i've discovered that you just got to be you and you got to write what you got to write and you got to express yourself in whatever language you want to express yourself and for me that's always been poetry and um poetry is good poetry is life and i will continue to you know share my poetry with you and I will continue to share these stories. I'm gonna do about a hundred stories by the end of the year, and it'll be about these topics. And it'll
first time I fell in love I became a mother The first time I held my newborn baby sisters When my mother was working at night to feed us Surviving in a country not own I became an artist When my pain was too deep for me to hold I became a healer when my wounds were too deep to cure I became a poet when my own language was cut from my tongue by the mean girls in school Part of my body was my inside 